so next is about uh, the fimbria itself in the last slide we have discussed about the fimbria which means it is a short pilus that is used to attach the bacteria to the surface and they are sometimes also called attachment villi. If the bacteria lost those fibrae as a result of mutation, now it lacks the ability to adhere to the surfaces and causing infection. For example, are the mutants of Neisseria gonerea, which is responsible for causing uh, gonorrhea. If this bacteria undergoes mutation, now it lacks the ability to cause gonorrhea and also it doesn't cause any infection. Next important function of this fimbria is in the attachment of the bacteria to the host surface for the colonization during infection, which means in the biofilm formation. So what do you know about biofilms? The biofilms are a collective of one or more types of microorganisms that can grow on many different surfaces. The microorganisms that form biofilm include bacteria, fungi and protists. And one common example of the biofilm is dental plaque which forms a slimy buildup of bacteria on the surface of the teeth. So the fimbria of the bacteria helps in attaching the bacteria on the host surface for example on the teeth surface for the colonization during infection. So this is an example for the fimbria. This short appendages are called what? Fimbria. But this long one that is called sex villi, which helps in the conjugation process. This short appendages are usually called fimbria which helps in attachment to the host surface. Whereas this long appendages are called villi. They help in the conjugation process. This one is donor. This one is recipient. So the donor transfer its DNA content through this villi to the recipient. This is the picture of conjugation. Now there are certain fibrae that contain lectins. Lectins are necessary for what? for adhering to the target cells because they can recognize those lectins can recognize oligosaccharide units which are present on the surface of the target cells. So the lectins of the fibrae are capable of recognizing oligosaccharide units which are present on the surface of the target cells. Other fibrae bind to the components of extracellular matrix and the fimbria found in the gram negative bacteria have a pillin subunits which are covalently linked. So mainly the fimbria contain lectins that which are capable of binding to the oligosaccharide subunits of the target cells. Some aerobic bacteria form a thin layer at the surface of the broth culture. So we can see in certain broth culture that is the liquid culture the upper surface consists of a thin layer of white thin layer on the surface which is in whitish in color and this layer is called what pellicle and this pellicle consists of many aerobic bacteria that adhere to the surface so they get attached to the surface with the help of what fimbria or attachment villi. So this attachment fillet or fimbriae helps in adhering to the surface. Thus, the fimbriae allows the aerobic bacteria to remain on the surface of the broth from which they take nutrients while they congregate near the air. Next about virulence factors. Fillet are responsible for virulence. I have already mentioned that there are certain bacteria who lost the fibrae may become non-pathogenic. For example, in the Neisseria gonadia. So, from that itself we can discuss that these villi are also responsible for virulence in the pathogenic strains of many bacteria including E. coli, Vibrio cholerae 
and many strains of Streptococcus. This is because the presence of villi greatly enhance bacteria's ability to bind to the body tissue. In the presence of the villi, the bacteria enhance its ability to bind to the body tissues and as a result it increases the replication rates and the ability to interact with the host organism also increases. So the replication rate increases as well as ability to interact with the host organism also increases. If a species of bacteria has multiple strains but only some are pathogenic. So the bacteria having Different types of multiple strains are present, but it is not necessary that all of them should be pathogenic. Only some are pathogenic. It is likely that the pathogenic strains will have villi while the non-pathogenic strains won't. So, it is not necessary that all the strains should have villi. But it is the second case is that those villi containing strains are pathogenic and also those villi absent strains are non-pathogenic. Next is about the development of attachment villi. Attachment of this villi, it may result in the development of further virulent strains. So, if the villi gets attached with a bacteria, this may be results in the virulent character within the bacteria. For example, non-pathogenic strains of Vibrio cholerae first evolved villi, allowing them, so this villi helped this Vibrio cholerae, which was non-pathogenic strain. Now, it helps the Vibrio cholerae to bind to the human tissues and form micro, that means small, small colonies within the human tissue, thus it became pathogenic. How? This villi then serve as a binding sites for the lysogenic bacteriophages that carry the disease causing toxin. So, this Vibrio cholerae strains after evolving this villi starts to bind with the human tissues forming the microcolonies within the human tissue. Then this villi can serve as the binding site for the toxigenic strain of bacteriophage. So what happens? Bacteriophage means virus attacking bacteria. So this virus which carry a disease causing toxin bind to those villi. So the gene for this toxin once incorporated within the villi uh, present bacteria. Now, the bacterial genome express that gene of disease causing toxin. Now, when the, so what happens? Now, the bacteria become toxigenic. That means, the genes for this toxin, once incorporated into the bacterial genome, it is now expressed. When the gene coding for the pilus is expressed, what happens? It may result in the converting non-pathogenic strains of Vibrio cholerae to pathogenic. This is how it can, this villi acts in the virulence factor responsible for causing disease. So, this villi acting as a binding site for the bacteriophage lysogenic. Lysogenic means killing type bacteriophages that carry the toxin and this toxin gets incorporated into the villi. Now, this villi which may cause uh, incorporation of that gene to the bacterial genome. So, the bacteria starts expressing the genes of this disease causing toxin. Now, the bacteria have changed to a toxigenic bacteria. This is the transformation of a non-pathogenic strain of Vibrio cholerae to a pathogenic strain. So, these are all about villi. Mainly, uh, it is mainly for the attachment, then uh, conjugation, villi, and mainly uh, virulence and pathogenic strains. Thank you.